Welcome back, everyone, in this uh, second uh, talk of this, uh, this, this second session of the day, the, the last session of the day, day two of uh, State of the Map. Uh, I'm again, I'm Lorenzo Stucchi from Italy, and we will have uh, the second talk from uh, Laura Mugea, Laura, Laura Mugea from uh, OSM Kenya, and she will present uh, the, the talk about the community growth. What we learn, we have learned about improving the membership and diversity of OSM Kenya throughout the community impact migrants. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining this session today. I hope you're doing okay from wherever you're joining us. Uh, today I'll be talking about community growth and I'll be basing this on a project that we did at the end of last year up to the start of the year uh, as part of the community impact micro grants that were offered by Hot OSM and Facebook. And just to get started, I thought uh, to be great to, uh, to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Laura Mugeha. I am joining in from a very cold Nairobi in Kenya. I am a geospatial engineer by profession and training, and I currently work with a social enterprise here in, in Nairobi called Sanaji. Uh, on my part time, I, I work as a regional ambassador for Youth Mappers, where I support chapters within the region. And lastly, I'm a big open tech advocate, uh, meaning I'm very passionate about open data and free and open source software. And actually, as part of that, I volunteer with a community here in Kenya, known as OSM Kenya. And who we are is that we are a local community of OpenStreetMap users, contributors, and advocates. Uh, most of our community members are based in Nairobi, and that also means that most of our activities are usually within the city. Um, I guess also something else about our community members, most of them are uh, either youth members, members or alumni, and um, I'd say also a huge number of them are junior professionals. And our community started in 2018, uh, and by that I just, uh, it's just that uh, that's when we started uh, organizing activities together and um, actually also called ourselves OSM Kenya uh, everywhere on social or even when we were organizing for our activities as well. And it actually started towards the end of 2018 as part of the Map to End FGM global campaign that was hosted by crowd to map We hosted an event here in Nairobi, uh, but since uh, that uh, event, we have hosted a number of free training sessions, a number of mapathons, and community events. Uh, actually, uh, in 2021, later this year, we were supposed to host um, the regional set of the map Africa conference, but because of COVID-19 and related reasons, you're not able to host the conference in person. Uh, but the conference is still happening. Uh, it will be a virtual conference. And just an FYI, the call for applications is open. So uh, if you are interested, I hope you're interested. <laughs> uh, you could check out uh, all the social media handles for the set of the Map Africa conference and submit a, a, a proposal to share with us what you're doing uh, from wherever you are. Um, and lastly, oh, something else that OSM Kenya does is that we support organizations to create and manage their mapping projects. Um, in the past few years, we've worked with organizations like the Kenyan Red Cross, the UN Habitat, the MSF in East and Central Africa, and so many more uh, to help them create uh, mapping projects on tasking managers to get our community members to help them to map those projects. And also at times to talk with organizations on how uh, their already existing data can be added to OSM. <laughs> Um, before 2020, uh, all our activities were in person. Uh, we never had a single activity that was virtual. So um, we would meet uh, for either a mapathon, for a training session, for even a general events where different organizations would share with us uh, what they are working on and what they're doing, uh, not just in the OSM space, but in the open data space in general. And uh, so when... Uh, 2020 happened <laughs> and the, uh, all, all that we could see were lockdowns and restrictions on gathering, which was, uh, I think, is essential and important for everyone. Um, what this meant for us is that we had to shift all our activities um, 
from an in-person setting to a virtual setting. So uh, all this was like a 360 shift for all of us. And we had no idea how to get started and um, how to go forward. So uh, that actually brought up a lot of confusion and uh, I guess some uh, moments of figuring things out. And one of the topics that we were talking about at that time was on community sustainability. But this was not a new um, topic on, or concept for us. It's something that we had talked about uh, for a very long while because um, uh, we always wondered um, on how the community could become more sustainable so that uh, over periods of time, we are getting new members. Over periods of time, we're getting new community leaders to help out um, in terms of uh, organizing and coordinating activities. And um, for us, I think uh, community sustainability just means the ability for a community, either online or offline, um, I guess online because mainly because of 2020 uh, to, uh, and it's, uh, yeah, so it's the ability for community uh, to be able to serve uh, value to its uh, present and uh, incoming members over time. And uh, while talking about community sustainability, it's essential uh, to consider or be aware that uh, that com uh, communities only exist because of people, because um, it's possible for everyone to contribute individually from their homes, from their workplaces, but uh, communities then provide spaces for people to work together, for people to network, and uh, we get to even do so much more through communities. So uh, that is one thing that we, um, we were making sure, even as we were talking about uh, sustainability, so making sure that everything um, is actually people-centric and not uh, any other way around. So um, as we are thinking about this, we had four focus areas. So uh, the first one was community definition. So uh, it might sound simple, <laughs> but uh, we're just wondering uh, to our members um, and even uh, to, the, to the community leadership committee, uh, like uh, how do we define the community um, on like what, what the community is, who who the community is made up of, and what's what's the community structure, and also lastly where where we are. Uh, I think for us it it is it is still important, and it was important to figure uh, what this is, and also trying to see is this uh, synonymous for everyone. Um, um, so because at times it's 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 very possible for people to have different different definitions for for all these things and what this would help us as well is even as we continue advocating for SMUs locally uh, it was important that as we share all this info uh, it's uh, important for everyone to sort of have the same understanding of what the community is and even as we are getting new members it's important to know for someone to know what they are getting into and if they're uh, sort of expectations would be met at the end of it. Um, then the second thing was on community value. So uh, on this, it was just, just figuring out like what's our mission, uh, what do we actually do, um, and are the things that we are doing actually helpful to to uh, the community in general and also to its members. Uh, also, just trying to figure out out of all these activities, what's important and what what's not important. Um, but then as well, as we had shared that community, uh, communities are made of people. So uh, we're also wondering what are our members' um, expectations? What do they value as well? Are we actually meeting the needs uh, of, of all our members or um, through our activities or our activities actually not aligned with what uh, community members need. Mm -hmm. Then the third focus area was on community 
diversity. So uh, wondering as well, how diverse and inclusive is the community uh, in terms of membership, in terms of leadership and activities. So, and in terms of diversity, it was not just uh, uh, sort of gender, gender, uh, gender diversity, but also uh, things, even when looking at membership, uh, do we have individuals? Do we have organizations? Because there are also a number of organizations that are actively contributing to OpenStreetMap. And do we have structures that are allowing for uh, all these mem people to join the community? Um, and are they able to openly and safely participate? So uh, on the spaces that we have created, uh, both online and offline, are they accessible? And is anyone who's interested able to join in and contribute uh, in one way or another. Uh, then the last thing was on community growth. So um, we're just wondering also for this, uh, do we have a process to check uh, if we are meeting our objectives and are we able to sort of assess and say if we are doing okay or not uh, as a community? And if we have also uh, initiatives that would uh, help us see where we are not doing so well and be able to improve on those uh, aspects. But also still looking at um, our individual members, uh, we're also wondering, do we have plans in the, and initiatives that have been, have been put in place to make sure that uh, all our members are learning and growing? And lastly, we are also looking at community collaborations. Are we co collaborating with other communities, either if it's in the mapping and GIS space, or generally any communities that have the same values as ourselves? Um, and uh, after we had our focus areas and we knew what we needed to find out, we then uh, set out to get this information from both our, um, our community members and our community leaders. Uh, also, this we saw so what we did is that we created an online form that we shared um, to our community members uh, to get their feedback and their insights as well. So, uh, and what we wanted to get from this, uh, in as much as we had those focus areas, the main thing uh, was to understand um, individual thoughts and expectations of each community member. And then um, also trying to get ideas on how we would shift all our activities into a virtual format. So are people still interested in the same things? Are people still interested in training sessions? If so, um, do people have an idea of uh, which sessions they would like to see or what aspects they would like to be trained on? Um, and also just trying to see uh, maybe people uh, going through and even uh, 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 I had the time, so <laughs> and there people were thinking that we could just wait and see how things go by instead of sort of just having a 360 shift uh, for everyone and trying to run activities um, when it would be impossible. So uh, that was the general idea uh, on getting this uh, information. So yes, uh, we sent the form, uh, gave it some time, I think a week or two to get feedback and then uh, tried to see what we can get uh, from, uh, uh, generally from the data that would be sent. Um, and yes, we got a lot of info and 90% uh, of everyone who responded were, uh, they were still interested in having these online training sessions, in attending marathons, in participating in webinars. Uh, but also one thing that stood out is that for every five survey responses, we only received a response from a female community member. Uh, and uh, it, it stood out and also made us to think on uh, uh, what uh, activities or which things could we do to uh, be able to sort of make this number go higher. And um, why also this stood out is that we, it's not that we do not have enough female members within the community, but we would have, we would, at that point we would say that uh, the engagement of female members were, was a bit low uh, in terms of activities and all that. So after that, we uh, set out some actions to work on. So uh, we had six main actions uh, so the main one, the first one was on leadership. 
uh cuz we had or we, st- we still do have a leadership committee uh for the for the community and the leadership committee uh committee generally assists in coordinating for activities uh but at that point we felt that um that this committee was overwhelmed in a way so we thought it would be helpful to get more volunteers to assist um in coordinating these activities also uh that meant also improving the structure of the committee so having some roles set out uh and having people leading those roles um then the second thing was on membership so um one thing with the OSM Kenya community is that what happened is that uh, we 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 had an online group where we would share anything that we are doing uh any plans that we are going to have but also a space for people to discuss anything to do with OSM in general um at times we also just had general mapping discussions on uh GIS in Kenya and uh the lack of data at times or the the difficulties that you might have when dealing with with data sets uh, within the country uh but how this first grew is that uh we basically used to used to add everyone who attended our events to the group um and we noticed that uh it would be essential to have some sort of uh registration for um uh, people to join and the goal was still to have free registration so that uh we we're not having some sort of barriers for someone to join the community so uh we're also trying to figure out how do we set up this registration and how do we share it um among our existing members and and also um across the board also generally within within the country for anyone who'd like to join and then the third thing which is sort of related to membership was on accessibility so we were also just wondering um um like how accessible is the community how accessible is the space so if someone is interested in OSM Kenya and um uh, they would like to learn more uh, like where would they get this information so uh that's when we also started thinking about having uh some public pages like wiki pages that define what the community is we are and everything if there's online spaces how to join them and even talking about uh, the registration that I was talking about previously like probably would be hosted there um then the fourth thing that we wanted to work on was on capacity building uh so because as you had seen previously that all 90% of uh everyone who responded uh everyone was still interested in um having or attending training sessions on different topics and also uh attending events where organizations would share uh, their work and such uh, for learning purposes then the second last thing was on diversity so uh we also set out to have some activities to improve the community diversity um then the last thing was on geographical coverage so to have activities and also to engage people out of Nairobi uh yeah so those were the six main actions that we set out and yes we made a, an initial attempt uh so i'd say the first thing is that we had a lot of sessions to discuss all, uh, all these results and also trying to see how we can translate uh these survey results into goals then the other thing is that we also added uh, a number of volunteers um to to the leadership committee to support um in all the extra roles that um the leadership committee and the text in terms of organizing for activities and then we began to also execute some of the actions that we had set out so say for example in terms of accessibility having uh, more posts going out on social um and also having uh everyone sharing more about the community and having more discussions and engagement on our platforms and then lastly we we hosted our first webinar but also our only webinar um and i, I guess uh what happened is that uh yes we had the first webinar uh but the turnout was not as good so i, I guess for the for the leadership committee 
uh, we were a bit disappointed, but I guess also at the same time, uh, also understanding that everyone is shifting generally in life uh, because of, uh, of the pandemic and everything. So uh, we thought of putting a hold <laughs> on the webinar and everything around that. But also around this time, we're also actively organizing for, for the set of the map Africa conference. Um, so uh, we, no, at the, actually at that time we, we were not, <laughs> I, but I think we were, we were writing the bid to host the conference. So I, I think the thought was to focus on, um, on that and also focus on other activities that uh, are mainly focused on setting up things um, then, and then pushed a bit on hosting the webinars and, uh, and everything else. So while we were at this stage, uh, that's when we learned about the community impact microgrants uh, that were um, to be offered by Hot SM and Facebook. One thing, uh, as to why we were excited about this is because even as we had started to um, host all these webinars and training sessions, one thing that always stood out was the inability to join the sessions because of uh, uh, lacking uh, funds to, to sort of get internet to join webinars, because uh, that could, that usually takes a little bit more, because um, it's basically video sharing. It's, it can actually be compared to video streaming. Uh, so we're always trying to see and figure out how, if we were able to sort of support our members in a way to be able to even join all the sessions that we want to have. Um, but also we were, we also had a number of um, projects uh, that we had always wanted to work on. Um, but I guess, we always had like financial constraints to be able to carry out these projects. So when we saw the call for the community impact micrograms, we were excited about it. And also uh, I would say being a microgrant, it's, uh, it was a good place to start with. Uh, I would say it was a bit manageable. Um, yeah, and the goal of the microgrant uh, generally by Hot SM and Facebook is to help um, open mapping and open data communities uh, with resources that they might need to train volunteers and grow their activities, also to develop leadership skills uh, of local leaders and OSM communities. And lastly, to broaden how open mapping and data are contributing to solving uh, the challenges that we're facing on a daily basis. Um, and uh, also one thing, I guess the other thing that we also learned about the this is that their goals sort of matched with what you are trying to achieve. So let's just say it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> um, yeah, so the project idea that was submitted was to uh, host uh, a technical training program for uh, community members uh, so that you can grow the community. And um, the, the, the other thing was to be able to uh, grow the community diversity. So in as much as we were having a training program, the goal was also to have an all-female cohort. And this was also our first training program uh, that we have we had ever done. And then the last thing was uh, to the, pro the mapping project that we were to work on or that we worked on was to map health facilities in Nairobi and to focus on um, adding facilities that offer female best health services. Um, so uh, looking at this right now, uh, feels like we were a bit ambitious, um, uh, but we still <laughs> went on. So uh, we sent out a call for applications. Uh, this is what we were promising to deliver uh, in terms of the technical training program, which was going to be an eight week training program. Uh, Eight weeks, but part-time, not full-time. So um, good for um, anyone who's working, anyone who's in school, meaning you could join after work or after school. And uh, the training program was to cover all aspects of OSM. So basically, it would move you from um, no experience or beginner mapper to 
I'd say an intermediate stroke advanced level because mm -hmm. uh, we are going to cover how to get started, how to create an account, how to start contributing. I'll uh, take you through all the tools that exist to start contributing. Uh, not just uh, uh, like tools that you would need to use a laptop, but also mobile tools, mobile based tools like Mapswipe and Mapillary. Um, we also cover things to do with AI assisted mapping, so how to use uh, Rapid, uh, like what's the whole thing around that. Um, also just getting thoughts from people, what, what do they think about AI and OSM contribution. Then we also covered things to do with data quality uh, and data validation. Uh, then the last two are focused on uh, because I, I think it's it's possible to get a lot of content online on uh, these sessions. I think a number a number of communities have uh, all these uh, sort of tutorials out on the internet, but. Uh, uh, we thought it was also very important for someone to know how this data could be useful to them. So how do you access OSM data in different formats? So if if you are uh, in the JS person, you need data, how can you extract um, extract and export data from OSM? Um, also some bits on map production, like using this data, how can you make uh, some maps? Uh, but also uh, looking at um, directly using OSM on the web. So uh, third-party applications like Mapbox uh, and Kato and um, even things like story, to do with story maps like ArcGIS online. So um, we all we covered all these bits to do with the, uh, accessing data and data visualization. And then lastly, we also had webinars uh, where which were basically presentations. Um, that they would include general um, general presentations on OSM. We also had sort of career focused ones where we had uh, organizations that um, uh, strongly use OSM as part of their workflows, sharing with us some of their work so that I guess uh, some of the uh, participants would see um, if I really get interested about OSM and I really love it, how does this shift uh, from um, from just doing it casually to actually doing it as part of work. Um, yeah, so that's what the training program looked like. And uh, we actually received 132 applications, uh, which was way more than what we expected. Uh, and initially, the goal was to train 25 uh, mappers. We ended up selecting 40 uh, basing on, um, uh, I'd say, the motivation to join the training program, but also uh, we made some considerations uh, for uh, people who had shared that lost their jobs and they were looking for uh, things that they would do that would help them in their careers. Uh, we also had eight trainers from the OSM Kenya group. And our timelines were that we would meet every week. Um, and basically, we would have three sessions per week. So on Mondays and Wednesdays, evenings, 7 p.m. Uh, uh, local time, and on Saturdays. So for Saturdays, initially, we the plan was to meet at, uh, during the day, but it ended up shifting uh, to evenings because most of the trainees shared that. Uh, they were working on Saturdays as well. Then lastly, uh, we also tried to make sure that we were having a mix of sessions. So uh, uh, trying to see that uh, for those three weekly sessions, we were having a, present, a mix of a, present, a presentation, a hands-on training session, and a mapathon so that uh, things are not monotonous and become boring. <laughs> And uh, through that, uh, we were able to do the, <laughs> we were able to successfully run the program. Uh, but however, we we ended up taking up a bit more more of time, so it didn't take eight weeks exactly. Uh, we also managed to map the health facilities in Nairobi. Uh, but however, some of the challenges that we did encounter during the process was that. Um, 
that uh, the first thing, uh, OSM Kenya is not an official entity, so we are not registered within the country as an organization, an association or anything. So that meant um, when we uh, required the funds to carry out the project, uh, we needed to find a way to do that. Uh, luckily, we were able to collaborate with Mark Kibera, who received the funds on our behalf. However, um, a, a challenge that came, not a challenge really, but we ended up starting to work on the project a little bit later. Uh, uh, I'd say two to three weeks later than we had anticipated, uh, just because of uh, the things that we had to do before that, sort of, such as creating an agreement and getting all parties signed on the agreement and all that. Uh, so on the other thing was on timelines. So since yes, we already started working on the um, on the on the on the program like two to three weeks later. Uh, this program we were running it starting uh, mainly starting in November. I'd say last we started during the last week of October, but being the last two of two months of the year, uh, that also shortened the time that we had. Because hey, in December we, uh, I think we stopped, we paused the program after the first week of the month, and uh, also another thing that happened is that uh, during those last two months we had a couple of national holidays, which meant not having activities on those days. Um, yeah, so in terms of timelines, there are a lot of delays. Also, the pausing of the program in December and trying to continue at the start of the year um, made things a little bit tricky for everyone. Um, so reconnecting to where we left, yes, we were able to do that, but it was still <laughs> a little bit tricky. Um, then the third thing was on the program focus. As you had seen, we sort of had... A, Look like two projects in one, so because we had a full-on training program, and we also had a mapping project. Uh, I'd say it was a bit, it was a bit ambitious, and uh, at the end of the day, it it became a lot of work for everyone, for the trainees and the and the trainers. So, would totally recommend to do either or and not both if in future anyone would be looking into having a training program. Uh, then lastly, a technical pro problem that we encountered is that we had um, insufficient tags for adding female health services on OSM. Uh, I think we had like more than 14 attributes, but we were only add, able to add two. But I guess it's a it's a good challenge because uh, uh, we were able to sort of discuss this with a number of other communities and organizations like health sites and trying to see how we can put in a proposal for uh, for these tags to be added. Uh, but other than these challenges, I would say that the program was a huge success. Uh, and I just noticed I didn't mention on how we used the micro grant. The micro grant was mainly used to provide internet for the trainees, and this was offered afterwards as a reimbursement. But we're also able to um, do other things like starting to work on the website and also being able to set up some things that needed funding. Um, and that would be it from me today. Uh, thank you so much for joining. I hope uh, this was exciting or helpful in one way or another. And if you'd like to learn more about the OSM for Kenya community, we are on Twitter and Facebook as OSM Kenya. Um, we have a community website that, that is a work in progress. Actually, don't go and have a look at it yet, um, but we'll be launching it soon. And then uh, we also have an email address in case if someone would like to reach out to us on collaborating or even joining the community, uh, feel free to reach out on either of these options. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much, Laura for, your, Laura, for your presentation. Very interesting and very impactful for presentation and also inspiring uh, presentation for uh, 
uh, new people that maybe in a new country or a new location would like to start a community, you, I believe that you provide a very good example on what, how to do it, some very important tips that were very of interest. And we have a, a lot of questions for you that uh, we can deeply and, uh, go in details and help also the, the, the other communities. I start uh, with the first one. Great talk, with, uh, Laura. How do you think should define community health in a local community? Do you think it is a good idea to come up with a sort of checklist that can be defined community health? For example, ratio of gender participation as community diversity metric, how frequent are trainings? Um, uh, I would say yes, uh, but uh, still just going back to the talk, um, I think for, especially for local communities, uh, it's really great to uh, consider what, what the members think. So uh, if, if the members do value uh, marathons and a uh, certain number of activities, uh, say per month, per week, uh, then I, I would say to go with that, uh, instead of having like a certain metric, uh, that we would put uh, for people to follow. So say, for example, uh, having to say, um, let's do eight marathons per month, but then say, for example, for us, uh, for for almost all, all of our members, everyone is mapping on their part time. So uh, it's impossible to have like hard uh, sort of numbers to put people on. Uh, so I'd say it varies per community, but yes, it would be great to have um, some sort of targets to work with uh, for guidance because yes again if it, if it's too uh, sort of simple and there's nothing that you're looking to then it's possible for the community to just stay uh, let's say uh, passive and not have any activities going on uh, and on um, gender diversity as as being measured uh, or being a metric for community health, I think it is important uh, for it to be considered. Uh, just because generally, if you if you're having one, um, say, a certain type of people within your community, uh, it's only the ideas and thoughts that you are able to consider um, in all your activities. If it's mapping projects, you'll only have a certain certain type of ideas that are coming in. Um, so personally, I believe uh, with gender diversity within a community, like uh, with the community being more inclusive and having sort of different types of people, you actually get to do more and um, get to get even more ideas on things that you could do and some activities. I guess also just different perspectives that come uh, come to play. Uh, uh, also another thing also for OSM Kenya, um, the topic to do with gender diversity was not even something that was brought up by the female members that were there. It was actually our male counterparts who were like, uh, we noticed this, uh, we, don't, we think we could do better because we you know a number of female members who could join the community. So uh, I guess also listening to your members, uh, but I guess also one thing to do with community health, uh, I think uh, something that a lot of people tend to uh, sort of confuse or mess up is uh, not understanding that community data does not equal to community metrics, so uh, or does not uh, define what community health is. So it's also not that uh, if a community has not had a number of activities over time, that it means uh, the health of that community is not as good or things need to be done. So uh, as I was just saying, it depends with community and how they're structured uh, and its members and how they are. I hope that happens. Yeah, I believe that was a very deep, a deep uh, reply and with all multiple uh, aspects that and uh, very important is also the reply. So uh, about the, 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 these tips that you shared, do you do you connect with some other local community or, cha or chapter to do they share? Uh, do you if you if you connect with them? Do they, they share some tips, some ideas? Uh, I would uh, directly. We have not worked with uh, different Western communities, but it would be great to do that. 
Uh, but generally, we participate uh, in OSM Africa activities. Um, but also, we have some of our members uh, sort of helping in uh, coordinating activities for OSM Africa. So things like the uh, OSM Africa Mapathon, the set of the Map Africa. Uh, um, yeah, so we, we generally uh, participate in regional activities under OSM Africa, but uh, directly we've not had we've not had a direct exchange with another OSM community. Um, yeah, within 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 the region and within the world as well. But it would be great to uh, have such uh, exchanges to learn from each other. Yeah, I believe that it's also important to, to as you share it, maybe some of some older community or some new community maybe can have new ideas, new tips, uh, maybe some growing pattern um, faster that can be shared and can be uh, found help for all the other communities and also for, for all the people. Uh, I saw that a very interesting question that uh, was very asked is the, that you talk about this uh, workshop that you are you, you, you that were presented. Uh, did you develop uh, your own uh, training materials? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so it depended with the with the sessions that you are having. So for the um, for the main uh, for the first ones on, the, on contributing to OSM, we used uh, material from Hot OSM. Um, I think yeah, they usually have some sort of, some slight depths on their uh, Hot Learning sem Learning something. <laughs> um, uh, so. Yeah, for those ones, we used their, their materials, but also tuned them to uh, match the program. So uh, for the training program, we were having like mapathons and hands-on sessions for regions within Kenya. So we would tune the material to fit what you are trying to do. Um, but then for the last sessions, I would say we had to de develop our material. So the ones on data visualization and all that. We have to develop our own. Yeah. Just, just a curiosity for about that. Do you share that material for new communities? New, I don't. I, I know I produce some material about OSM, and so so this, there is always sometimes to adjust. Also for a new community, maybe it's more relevant to my to have uh, the study of uh, some cases about an uh, uh, area that you know. And but you do you share this material that you produce is somewhere uh, reachable for for other people. Uh, yes, we have the material, all the material uploaded, so uh, I can share a link on the, on the on the chat after this. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe they can write to you if they're interested and can be of interest. Yeah, sure. Another interesting barrier that, uh, and sorry, another interesting question that was posed is about the, the language barrier. So uh, you... Is there a language barrier using English and including tech language is in OSM Kenya? If yes, how do you try to close this gap? So uh, no, because <laughs> uh, because uh, yeah, in, in Kenya we 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 speak in English and in Swahili, but also there are a bunch of uh, uh, tribal languages. But uh, like all through school, the main language is. English, like, like from primary school to university. So language barrier in terms of uh, connecting to English content uh, is not such an issue. Um, and then for in terms of tech, I, I guess for OSM Kenya, it works for us because most of our members um, have a JS background, a mapping background, or people who've done mapping in, in one way or another. Uh, yes, at times we do have a number of members that, uh, who do not have these backgrounds, but we try to uh, really break things down uh, uh, for, for, for our beginners. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. So it's, it's, a pro, it's a pro and it's also something that reduces gaps that can be maybe solved in other community and also other community can share tips on how to solve this gap. There are other questions, for example, about that if there are mapper outside Nairobi who, who are willing to organize local events. Uh, I would say uh, we, 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 we have not, we, we have only uh, like been approached by one group, 
outside Nairobi who were interested in organizing marathons and such, but uh, that was just at the start of 2020. So they sort of paused on that. Uh, yeah, but other than that, we have not uh, seen other any groups who are interested, uh, except for Youth Mapas chapters, because we do have Youth Mapas chapters out of Nairobi. And uh, for those, they organize their mapping activities as well, individually. But out of that, we've only been approached by one group. OK. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you also for this reply. Maybe in future we will be approached, or there will be some some, some mm-hmm. member that are just, uh, shy. But from now we start to to to, to, con- to contact you. Uh, there are two questions about the state of the map uh, Africa that will happen uh, say this year. And uh, mm-hmm. so, so one question was about uh, the fact that if the the event was in person or, or virtual, there was a replay by Joe from Maybe you, you can maybe explain more about this topic. And the, the second question is, uh, uh, with the Kenya hosting State of the Map Africa later this, in this year, has this changed the community in any way, or do you think it is will change the community? Uh, so uh, I guess that's also to the second one. So we, we are no longer hosting uh, because the conference went uh, virtual. But uh, yeah, initially, we would have uh, had like a lot of positive impact because um, yes, as a community, we have been there, we have been doing all these activities, but still in terms of connecting to uh, say um, other institutions, even people like governments uh, and uh, different governmental departments, it had been a little bit tricky, but with the conference, uh, there was some sort of awareness that came with that and also uh, a number of these institutions trying to find a way on how they can be involved and trying to figure out what what OSM Kenya is, what OSM is. So uh, yeah, uh, I guess even before that, that awareness awareness grew, but it would have been uh, even better in such a, in such a way that we would be able to uh, in, in terms of collaborations, in terms of advocacy and reaching. Uh, to more people. It's even also through the conference, we also just got uh, a lot of individual requests, uh, people trying to find out um, how to join the community, how they can help out. So yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, that that would have been very impactful, but we have still seen some impact in, in one way or another. Um, yeah, so I, I guess even for, for conferences, especially for set of the map, uh, uh, conferences, when, whatever they happen, they usually have a lot of local impact to, to those communities. Yeah, I believe also so because I saw an example in Italy when we had uh, in 2018. And also, there was uh, like uh, uh, Jeffrey wrote in the chat that uh, the, the, the call for proposal is still open at least until uh, the 20th of July. So maybe if someone, uh, someone that is part, part of this talk uh, or is also mm-hmm. watching this talk can also make this proposal. Since also it is online, can be is also say it's less cool because you're not going to, to Kenya, but also it's also some positive part because maybe it's, uh, everyone can join the event from from home, yeah. and so everyone can participate. Like the state of the map that is online, everyone from different countries is participating. Yeah. So we have one other question that is about the uh, NGO or government agency or corporation that you just maybe say something before. If there are some some of that uh, beside the OT grant and the Facebook grant, uh, Nico grant, uh, that are interested or working uh, or planning to work in OSM in Kenya. Uh, so uh, generally, like most of the requests that we do get uh, are usually from organizations who have um, solutions that, de- that, that are dependent on our web maps. Uh, so they're usually interested on in how they can shift to using OpenStreetMap. Um, but uh, I, I guess what's interesting is that uh, for all this, like, uh, for the people that have approached us, they're, they're not really looking into sort of supporting contribution per se, but sort of learning how they could use the platform. Um, 
So, but most of the time we find that uh, there's uh, lack, lack, lack of enough data and all that. So say for example, uh, like earlier this year we were approached by a company that does uh, deliveries. Um, so they, they, they have a web, a web map function to obviously for uh, someone who's requesting the service to enter their location and see how the product moves and all that. So they wanted to shift to OSM, but uh, since they got to the app and uh, in terms of uh, transport data and routing, it wasn't sufficient. <laughs> That's where the conversation ended. Uh, but obviously we were proposing uh, if we could work together and have a way to update the map and get all this data in, uh, but they are not as interested. So we that, those are usually most of the requests that we get. They're usually like uh, tech companies with such solutions. Um, but also at times, also a lot of uh, non-governmental or uh, organizations in the development space. Uh, but also for most of them, it's usually on um, how they could uh, access the data, how they could use the data. Uh, so we haven't gotten um, a chance like to to work with an organization on a project where we we are actually contributing data to the platform. But uh, if there's ways where we are able to assist them on how to use, uh, still it's still helpful in a way because it's still advocacy. Um, yeah, and so I, I'd say yeah, mostly it's either organizations in the development space, a number of them, uh, but also a, a number of tech tech companies and organizations within the country. Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe that it's a, it's not. You say you say you say like a normal things, but I believe there is a big goal that you reach if a, a company or other uh, entities that are interested in using OSM in Kenya are coming to to OSM Kenya to ask to to have yeah. consultancy. And I believe it is a big goal. If every in every country we found a, a lot of group that could manage these things, we have in the chat a big proposal from Gregory, you say that uh, the, sta the state of the map uh, can this year pass from the organization in Kenya to, to, to the virtual event. Gregory is proposing also to have the, the international one maybe in Kenya next year. We can be, the proposal has been uh, made a lot of reaction and also Geoffrey saw that brought uh, the interest. So it can be a big proposal that uh, you, can, mm -hmm. you can think to, to start to launch it. Yeah, uh, we, we can chat. You can chat with the, the rest of the community, and uh, once there's a call for bids, we'll be sure to to work on something and submit. Uh, yeah, and also hopefully all these things to do with COVID nineteen. Uh, I guess hopefully the situation would be better so that people would be able to travel over. Yeah, yeah, could be. Uh, I believe that is a very good handle that we can uh, for this talk for this. It also could be a very important hand for, for say, for, for the development of a community to arrive to host the international state of the map event. Also, in is a, a very a very big effort, but can be when there is a very big community in a local community is a very a very also you say before that the organization of state of the map Africa was a very important goal to reach, and also a very start for for creating for creating the. A community and because it, some interest in move also someone is the chat is already booking ticket so you have to make the, <laughs> the proposal you are you, now there is no possibility to there will be also at, at least a proposal for having the event in kenya i believe it's, yeah. it's very welcome from uh, all the community so thank you very much laura for your proposal uh for your for your presentation and for all the talk for all the reply to the to the, to the question uh, thank you very much to, to everyone else that uh, remained connected and uh, watched the, 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 this last talk of the second day of State of the Map. I remind you that uh, the, in day three we start at 10 uh, UTC tomorrow, for, uh, depending on your time zone. Uh, so for for here it's uh, it's all. I remind that tomorrow morning there will be the, the academic track. So in the morning and later in the afternoon and also there will be other talks. So stay tuned for for the last day, for during the last day of this 2021 State of the Map event. So uh, thank you to, to everyone. Thank you to Laura again for the presentation and see you in, in the last day. Bye.